Hey YouTube, this is Tom at TM Aquatics and I'm here to talk to you about yet another expansion here in the fish room. I'm calling it Fish Room 5.0. Stick around, you don't want to miss this one. All right YouTube, you heard it correctly. We are going to expand this fish room yet again. Now I know what some of you are going to say already. Tom, you told us that before. You are absolutely correct. This fish room is about nine going on 10 months old. We started out with this rack over here. Shortly after we built this pleco rack over here. Then we built this fry and grow out rack or which was a fry and grow out rack over here. And yes, after this rack was done, I said I was done expanding. Then we built this fry rack over here that is a fully automated system and yes i also said i was done expanding but i'm not done expanding let me show you what we have going on here in the fish room all right youtube well this is what i have to work with down here now in the fish room i came down here yesterday and this whole line of shelving actually came all the way down here in fact there was one more shelf down here and i was able to get it out of here and take these shelves rearrange them as such and consolidate reorganize them with a bunch of my wife's stuff that she doesn't need doesn't use and never touches but i was able to reorganize it get rid of one shelf and we could actually probably get rid of this shelf here this just has some fish tank stuff i could move that onto that rack but gotta know how far you can push your limits with your uh, spouse and partner and uh, i knew that just getting rid of this one shelf here was about as much as i wanted to bite off at this point my goal was simple to be able to come down and create enough space right in this area to where i could fit a rack of 40 breeders those 40 breeders would be used for my L260 Queen Arabesque. I have two of them down in this tank with my Sultan somewhere. And then I needed a larger tank for this group of L397s. There's eight of them in this tank. And um, they are getting rather large and they've needed a new tank for a while. Let's see if we can see any of them. Oh, there we got a tail. There's another tail there. But I have eight L397s in this 29 gallon growing out and they need more space. So my goal was simple, create enough space for a rack of 40 breeders. On top, I would put these three 10 gallon tanks for future use, probably growing out some baby plecos, things like that. But I was able to do such a fantastic job down here creating space that I now have enough room for a rack of 75 gallon tanks. So that is the direction that I am currently leaning right now for the new rack. Would be two 75 gallon tanks and on top I would still do the 10 gallons, but I'd be able to pick up one more 10 gallon and have four 10 gallon tanks on the top. So here's what I was going to do. And this, by, by being able to put some 75 gallon tanks, one thing I don't have to do is take my L134s and move them out here into my rec room. This tank here, I've talked about this many times about this tank being transitioned into a uh, pleco tank, but this is out here in the rec room where we hang out a lot and pleco tanks aren't the most eye appealing tanks to look at. They're very, very you know, drab, boring, not a lot of activity. Now this tank has never been quote unquote scaped this has just been a jungle tank that I use for growing out a bunch of plants. But even as a grow out jungle, it's still much better or nicer to look at than a pleco tank. In here I have a bunch of Sagittaria. I always grow out some sword plants for a club auction. I have a bunch of, uh, uh, cri uh, not crypts, but Bucephalandrus that I'm growing out on both sides of the tank. A ton of boosts in here. And then I have a bunch of crypts back in here, Retrospirellus, Wendettais, and things like that. Java fern, uh, subwasser tang. But I was going to tear this tank down completely and move my group of L134 leopard frog plecos into that tank, but I no longer have to do that. Now, why was I going to move my L134s out of this tank here? Well, because I have continued to add to this group to now I have 
12 L134 Plecos in this 55 gallon tank. And it just might be a little too much for this size tank. Now, they've been getting along fine. There's no aggression in this tank. Each male has their own established cave and life is going well in here. In fact, life is so well in this tank that I also want to say that I had my first L134 leopard, uh, leopard frog spawn. I have talked to guys who have kept L134s and got so frustrated because they didn't even get their leopard frogs to spawn or lay eggs once. After years, they ended up getting rid of their group. I've had my group, I started this group about a year ago. And this female right here actually laid eggs for me this past week. Now, here's the bad news. The bad news is she was trying to spawn with a very inexperienced uh, sub-adult male. Didn't know what he was doing. None of the eggs made it. But the fact that this female laid um, is a good sign, right? They'll figure it out. They're young. All of my L134s are fairly young. So just the fact that they laid... Uh, tells me that I'm doing something right, giving them the right food, keeping the water you know, within the right parameters. I have enough current in here, enough water movement to where they felt comfortable to do what Mother Nature calls on them to do. So it's a step in the right direction. Yes, I wish those eggs would have been fertilized and I wish those eggs would have been um, you know, a successful spawn. Um, but hey, it's a step in the right direction. So I'm super excited about that. But there are 12 L134s in here. I would like to get them into a bigger tank and I talked about moving them out into the rec room. I'm not gonna do that anymore. They're staying here in the fish room where I spend my time and they're gonna go over here in a 75 gallon tank. Down below is gonna be another 75 gallon tank and what I plan to do is move the L333s. I have 12 of them as well, seven large adults as you can see. They weren't large when I bought them, but they're getting large now because I feed them the best food for high pan cistrus that is available, Ebo Aquaristic. And uh, these guys are getting enormous. So I have seven Porto de Maz, and then I have five juvenile, real small, one and a half inch uh, L333 black and yellows. And I will actually be adding to that black and yellow group and eventually splitting them from the Porto de Maz. But, Again, the other ones are so small, I don't have to worry about them uh, for a long time. So, But nevertheless, there's 12 fish here. They will be moved into one of the 75 gallons over here. That will free up this 40 long. It will free up this 55 gallon tank. Down in this tank, I have eight L397 plecos. They are panicolas. They are a wood eater. We'll see if we can see any tail. There's a fin of one right there. There's a tail. Anyways, I have eight of them in here. They need more, uh, excuse me, more space. They will be moved into probably the 55 gallon tank. That leaves my 40 long down here available. Over here, I have six L264 Sultan Plecos. And there's one hanging out right there. I have six of those. And then I have two L260 Queen Arabesque Plecos. My plans would be to take the L264s out of here and move those six L264s over into the 40 breeder. Leave the L260s in this tank, pick up another four L260 Queen Arabesque and have them in here. That frees up my 29 gallon tank over there. I would take my blue-eyed Ancestress or I would take my trio of Super Reds that are out in the 75 gallon Endler's tank and either move the blue-eyed ancestress or the super reds in that tank there. So that's the plan back here and what's behind the whole expansion, Fish Room 5.0. I'm super excited about it. Uh, it's not that I have too many tanks or not enough tanks back here. I have a lot of tanks, but I have a lot of small tanks. And what I need are a couple larger tanks for these growing groups of plecos back here. So that's my plan anyways. One thing I want to share with you as well, cannot end this video without showing you these beautiful high pan cistrus zebras, these L46 zebras. I have eight of them in my group. 
and recently made a couple of changes to this tank and these fish are just looking a lot happier since I made this change. Well, what did you do? Here's what I did. I added another filter to this tank. I did have these two AquaClear 50s on this tank. I am an AquaClear fanboy. I just like AquaClears. But I picked up this Marineland Penguin 350 because they're cheap and they move a lot of water. 350 gallons, I believe, is what they, they do move, somewhere around there. But just look at the water turbidity and, and how it churns up that oxygen and the surface uh, of the water there and all the micro bubbles. Now some of that might be a little uh, poo or something, could be some um, pieces of stuff in the water, but a lot of that that you see floating, those are micro bubbles created by all the turbulence now that I have in this tank. And just the added oxygen and the added current and water flow these zebras just seem a lot happier. Now, yes, these are all captive bred. They've never been in the Rio Zingu in uh, Colombia, or is it Brazil? In Brazil, my, my bad. Um, but they do come from the Rio Zingu, which is a very clear, uh, moderate to fast flowing river system with a lot of rocks. And in, the, in their natural environment, they wedge themselves into really tight rock uh, crevices like they're doing right here. There's actually six of them up under here in these rocks. There's the seventh right there. And then the eighth is back here to the sponge filter. But um, since I've added the extra filter to this tank, the water flow, the water current is a lot uh, stronger. And uh, these guys uh, are just, they come out a lot more. They just act a lot happier, but man, they are beautiful fish. I don't care if you're a pleco person or not, nobody can tell me that those are not a beautiful, beautiful little fish. But what I also noticed, uh, I don't have a lot of substrate as you can see, I just have a very light, uh, maybe a quarter inch uh, layer of pool filter sand in here. And uh, I don't, because the added water uh, current in here, I don't have any more dead spots. So the water or the, uh, um, the uh, substrate is staying a lot cleaner and um, yeah, it just looks, the tank just looks a lot better now. So anyways, uh, just wanted to share this with you because these guys are hanging out right now, literally and figuratively, and uh, can't end a video without showing those guys off. All right, well, that's gonna wrap it up. That is Fish Room 5.0, the next expansion. And um, again, I might not have the biggest fish room on YouTube, but what I have is all mine and I try to keep it looking nice and uh, Try to keep it efficient, relative, and current. But anyways, uh, stay with me for the build. This is gonna start sometime in January. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out how I can automate it, figure out a water change system to pull water from my RO system into those tanks. Um, just a little bit of planning to do. And then um, we'll start sourcing the materials, the tanks, the equipment, all of that. I'll probably pull a new 15 or 20 amp circuit off my panel here and just run it over there. That'd be a real easy job with my panel right there. And um, yeah, so with that being said, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, follow along on this next build, hit that subscribe button. If you're already a subscriber, thank you for watching. Your support means everything to me. If you have any comments or questions, go ahead and post them down below. And like always folks, thanks again for watching my video and taking the time out of your schedule. And until the next one, we'll catch you later. Dang, they're beautiful.